Yesterday we had Managing Director Marcus Grubb from the World Gold Council giving us an interesting insight as to why gold is such a desirable and reliable commodity, especially in today's market environment. Well, following on from yesterday's interview, I thought it would be useful for our viewers if we got a more in-depth analysis of how gold is faring at the moment in the markets and what the current nine-month bull run for gold means when it comes to future market sentiment. Well, Adam Myers, a senior market strategist at Credit Agricole CIB, joins me on the line from London. Adam, let's start with the current breakout for gold. We know market players are getting excited about the prospect of more easing from the likes of the Fed, but why are we seeing such a bullish run for gold at the moment? Well, I think for two reasons. Firstly, as you point out, there is a policy stimulus which is expected, and that's lifting gold from its recent range. But also, I think there's a general disenchantment or even concern about fiat currencies generally. And as that concern grows, tangible assets, including gold, will probably continue to rise throughout the rest of this year. Now, we know gold is one of the safest havens around, most notably because it holds its value exceptionally well. But do you have any concerns about this trend and what effects, if any, it could have on market sentiment going into Q3 and Q4? Well, I do have concerns about what it means for market sentiment. Because if we were to see a big increase in the demand from gold, not only from central banks but from private investors also, it would suggest that markets are becoming very much disenchanted with fiat currencies. And if that were to be the case, we could move into a period where reserve currencies like the US dollar fall quite substantially and, of course, tangible assets grow uh, exponentially. Now, when I spoke to Mr. Grubb yesterday, he expressed his concern as to whether investors are properly questioning why, at this financial and economical time of the year, are central banks buying up such huge amounts of gold. What are your thoughts on this? Well, there's a very good reason for that. It's because they are probably also very concerned with their own portfolios and indeed their own balance sheets. If you consider that some even small central banks, for example the Swiss National Bank, have intervened to the tune of nearly $69 uh, billion in one month, other central banks are probably equally concerned that their holdings of currencies are going to be diluted going forward. And of course, quantitative easing from the Fed, possible quantitative easing from the uh, European Central Bank, not to mention previous moves by the Bank of England and the Bank of Japan, are all pointing towards using gold as a very effective diversifier for those central bank portfolios. Finally, gold has risen 70% since the Fed bought up $2.3 trillion of debt between 2008 and 2011. What about the future value of gold, though? Because we're approaching the wedding season in parts of Asia, such as India, which we know is a huge consumer of gold. Prices are still rising. Will gold hold its value forever? Absolutely. I think the value of gold is not only going to hold, it's going to appreciate. And I'd be looking for gold to trade 2000 by the end of the year, not only because of that cyclical demand that you indicate, of course, with the Indian wedding season, but also from the fact that a number of central banks look like they're going to increase their holdings of securities, therefore debasing their currencies and generally creating a much more significant risk about fiat currency perceptions generally. As those fears rise, not only central banks, but private investors will enter the gold market in greater size, and that will push gold up towards that $2,000 mark that I mentioned earlier. The underlying risk for gold is structural. While there are cyclical drivers that obviously uh, lift uh, gold and then allow it to also to fall, I think the structural outlook for gold has changed meaningfully in the last two years with the advent of quantitative easing from central banks. If other central banks like the ECB join this movement towards quantitative easing, there will be very few currencies that are left untarnished that are of a sufficient size to allow large investors like sovereign wealth funds, like central banks, and like some of the very large uh, pension funds in the world to get significant uh, exposure to an inflation-protected asset. So that looks suggest to me that the structural outlook for gold has changed meaningfully for the future. Okay, thank you for joining me, Adam, and giving us your analysis on gold. We're fast approaching the end of the trading week. Don't forget to check in again on Monday next week when we'll have another review of the latest financial news to hit the papers. We'll also have a targets and focus interview looking at a selection of currency pairs and, of course, all our usual updates and interviews. But until then, and from all of us here at Dukas Copy TV, have yourself a great weekend. Goodbye.